Hello everyone, welcome back to yet another lecture on dryland agriculture. In this particular lecture, you will know a lot of things about dryland agriculture. What is dryland agriculture? What are the different classes, different category of dryland agriculture? How they are delineated and how to manage dryland agriculture? How resources are being managed in dryland agriculture? Watch the lecture till the end and don't miss the end part because there is a quiz, short quiz for you. Uh, in the end of the lecture, appear that quiz because it is very important to assess yourself after the lecture and uh, what you know, what you don't, uh, you can get uh, that from appearing that quiz, right? So watch the lecture till the end and appear the quiz and if you face any doubt or if you have any doubt, you can ask in the comment section. The moment we talk about trial and farming, what comes to our mind? The first thing comes to our mind is shortage of water shortage of irrigation water why we need irrigation we need irrigation to supply water or moisture to a crop for its proper growth and for proper mechanism right why plant needs water because it needs water for its metabolism it needs water for transpiration it needs water for photosynthesis for its biomolecular synthesis for its enzyme activation right whenever there is shortage of irrigation water we generally depends on rainfall, rainfall of that particular area, of that particular locality, right? In dryland farming, our crop production generally depends on rainfall, right? Dryland farming means we are growing crops in dryland condition means there is not enough moisture available. There is dry period, a part of crop growth period that is where moisture shortage is more common, right? So in dryland farming, Crop production depends entirely on rainfall. So we do not have irrigation facility in there. Dryland agriculture is those agriculture practice where the potential evapotranspiration generally greater than precipitation. What is potential evapotranspiration? There is the maximum evapotranspiration from a particular area, right? That is more than precipitation. So what happens here? Negative water balance present. In dry land farming situation, there is negative water balance. Okay. So, depending on rainfall, dry land farming again, dry land agriculture, dry land agriculture, depending on rainfall, it is categorized into dry farming, dry land farming, and rain fed farming. Depending on rainfall, dry land agriculture classified into dry farming, dry land farming, and rain fed farming. Let's see what is the difference between dry farming, dry land farming, and rain fed farming based on different constituents they are classified according to rainfall as we have discussed that based on rainfall this classification has been done so where we call that the farming is dry farming whenever the rainfall of that locality is less than 750 mm of what type of agriculture is practiced there uh, that we call dry farming if the rainfall is 750 to 1150 mm then we call dry land farming and if the rainfall is more than 1150 mm then that is called rain fed farming so what are the regions okay based on region dry farming is generally practiced in arid region dry land farming is generally practiced in semi arid region and rain fed farming is generally practiced in humid region what is the length of growing period length of growing period in dry farming region is less than 75 days length of growing period in dry land farming region that is 75 to 120 days length of growing period in rain fed farming that is more than 120 days what is length of growing period it is a period when the soil moisture is enough to supply that water loss that is due to evapotranspiration right so what happens plant take the water and it transfer that water right when there is enough water availability for enough transpiration because transpiration is the medium of gaseous exchange when transpiration occurs when stomata opens then there is gaseous exchange of carbon carbon dioxide and oxygen that carbon dioxide is utilized in photosynthesis so if the transpiration is inhibited if there is water shortage and transpiration is inhibited there will, will not be the exchange of carbon dioxide and oxygen happen so the photosynthesis is limited at that condition so length of growing growing period higher means moisture is available for a longer period so there we can go for multiple cropping like double cropping triple cropping but if the length of growing period is less like here it is less than 75 days so here we can go for only monocropping okay then extent of crop failure is most common in dry farming region and it is less frequent in dryland farming and rare in rainfed farming 
what are the constraints in dry farming the moisture shortage is the major constraint in dry land farming both shortage and excess moisture is constant in rain fed farming excess moisture is a constant what are the necessary practice we have to do in dry farming moisture conservation must be followed in dry land farming moisture conservation as well as drainage is in case of vertical we must follow in rain fed farming drainage should be adopted because if we do not drain the water excess moisture then what happens anaerobic situation prevails in the root zone so that will be not uh, congenial for crop growth right then according to unescap united nation economic and social commission for asia and pacific dryland agriculture is categorized into two types what are they dryland farming and rain fed farming so again uh, the classification is dryland farming and rain fed farming based on rainfall that is if the rainfall is less than 800 mm then that is categorized into dryland farming if the rainfall is more than 800 mm that is categorized into rain fed farming what are the region in dryland farming the regions are arid and semi arid region and rain fed farming sub humid to humid region length of growing period here less than 200 days in dryland farming and in rain fed farming it is more than 200 days moisture availability to crop Uh, shortage in case of dryland farming enough in case of rain fed farming cropping system suitable cropping system what we can suitably take in dryland farming region single cropping and intercropping and in rain fed farming we can go for intercropping as well as double cropping constraints what are the constraints wind and water erosion is the constraint of dryland farming and mainly water erosion is the constraint in rain fed farming because there is higher rainfall the relevance of dry farming in indian agriculture why we study dryland agriculture in india okay what is the relevance nearly 70% of rural people live in dry farming region this is the major region because in dry farming zone nearly 75% 70% of rural people lives in those region and it constitute this dryland farming region constitutes 60% of cultivated area that produce 42% of food grain 75% of oil seed 90% of pulses and 70% of, of cotton that means more than 70% of cotton more than 75% of oil seed more than 90% of pulses are being grown in dry land region dry farming areas so this has significant implication so if we study and we do research in dry land farming how to get more from dry land agriculture then we can increase our productivity increase our national production even after exploring ultimate irrigation potential 50% of cultivated area would be rain fed even if we maximize our irrigation potential also there will be 50% area that will be under rain fed condition we we cannot provide enough irrigation to those areas so that is a huge task to increase the productivity and production of dryland agriculture there is a scope of increasing the production from dryland uh, farming dryland agriculture then resources are sub optimally used in these areas in dryland agriculture resources are not fully used or utilized their efficiency decreases more scope for increase in yield as there is plateau and in modern day problem in irrigated agriculture so what we have seen from a green revolution time if we go for irrigated farming then there is salinity problem water logging problem then there is multi nutrient deficiency there is ill plateau but in dryland farming there is sub optimal use of resources and there is enough scope to get more produce from these areas right scope for development of agroforestry and social forestry we can also see so these are certain points for which we should do more and more research in dryland agriculture right progress of dryland research uh, in india let's see some timeline of dryland research in india so first dryland research station it was established uh, near manjri manjri near pune by b a tamane in 1923 the first research center for dryland research it was uh, at manjri near pune by b a tamane now, there are several research center after 1923 there there were several research center established in india so in 1933 research station established at bijapur and solapur in 1934 research station established at hogari and raichur in 1935 research station established at rohtak in 1944 monograph on dry farming uh, in india it was developed by nb kanetkar in 1959 gajri was established gajri what is gajri central arid zone 
जोन रिसर्च इंस्टीट्यूट ओके गाजरी वॉज एस्टाब्लिश एट जोधपुर ओके जोधपुर इन नाइनटीन सेवेंटी रिसर्च सेंटर एस्टाब्लिश एट अंडर ए आई सी आर पी डी ए ऑल इंडिया कोर्डिनेटेड रिसर्च प्रोजेक्ट ऑन ड्राइल एंड एग्रीकल्चर इन ट्वेंटी थ्री लोकेशन इन नाइनटीन सेवेंटी टू इक्री सर्ट वॉज एस्टाब्लिश इन हाइदराबाद इक्री सर्ट इन नाइनटीन सेवेंटी फोर सी एस सेंट्रल सॉयल एंड वाटर रिसोर्स कंजर्वेशन रिसर्च एंड ट्रेनिंग इंस्टीट्यूट एस्टाब्लिश इन नाइनटीन सेवेंटी एस्टाब्लिशमेंट ऑफ ट्राइल एंड ऑपरेशनल रिसोर्स प्रोजेक्ट In 1985, Creda was established. So, among these institutions, if I will ask you, uh, which institutions uh, work under uh, arid climate, uh, you can answer mainly Kajri. It is in Rajasthan, working under uh, arid climate. Then, for water conservation, soil and water conservation, CSW CRTI, it is doing great job. Then, Ikrisat also work under semi-arid tropic. Then, uh, Creda, uh, it is for dry land agriculture specially. then problems or constraints of crop production in dry land what are the problems or what are the constraints of crop production in dry lands there are certain constraints like climatic constraints and soil constraints and technological constraint and socio economic constraints we can uh, find in dry land agriculture what are the climatic constraints there are variable rainfall and aberrant monsoon in uh, dry land uh, condition why we call it dry land because there is uh, rainfall is less rainfall intensity spreading of rainfall the uh, rainfall occurrence it is uneven so there that's why that is uh, dry land agriculture and the crop failure is more there then high atmospheric temperature in dry land area we can expect higher atmospheric temperature low relative humidity hot dry wind high potential evapotranspiration so there is a less production this environmental condition this weather uh, attributes these are not suitable for crops that's why these are the climatic constraint right variable rainfall aberrant monsoon high atmospheric temperature low relative humidity hot dry wind high pet these are certain climatic constraint what are the soil constraints in dry land agriculture areas low soil moisture water holding capacity of the soil in dry land agriculture dry land area that is low low organic matter content poor fertility soil crusting hard pan deep crack these are certain constraints soil constraints in dry land area technological constraints what are the technological constraints in dry land traditional cultivation practice are being followed in dry land lack of suitable varieties in dry land situation then generally farmers not growing hybrids they are going going for you know traditional cultivar so uh, there is lack of suitable varieties for dry land situation socio economic constraints like poor and marginal farmers generally generally in dry land agriculture dry land areas you can find poor and marginal farmers they they do not have that much capital to invest in their farming techniques right less access of inputs non availability of credit in time low risk bearing capacity right so these are certain constraints in dry land agriculture dry land farming situation how to manage different natural resources in dry land management of natural resources in dry land development of suitable land use planning for each agro ecological region of the country soil uh, and moisture conservation practices should be done integrated soil fertility management should be practiced inter basin transfer of surface flow rain water harvesting for storing uh, rain water for off season cultivation integrated water shed management program then on farm irrigation water management to enhance water use efficiency integrated farming system to reduce risk and recycle resources so these are certain technique or manage uh, natural resource management